Okay, so I know you're all very, very tired and it's the end of the day, so you're pleased to know that there's, this is an entirely philosophical talk, so there's no mathematics here. Um, also, since there are no string theories present, and I've had a lot of string theory bashing, I kind of feel like I ought to stand up for a little bit. So in this talk, I'm going to be defending the methodology used by string theories to defend, uh, to defend their claims. So, obviously experiments are hugely important resources for evaluating physical theories. Um, and quantum gravity is notoriously uh, inept at producing these experiments. Okay, so in the, in the superstring theory volume by Green, Schwartz and Witten, we see that we find this claim, right? Quantum gravity has always been a theorist puzzle par excellence, and experiment offers little guidance. So, as you all know, quantum gravity requires that you use things like conceptual consistency, ability to replicate old evidence that we already have, and ability to unify and these kinds of things. So, I'm a bit disappointed that Lee Smolin didn't turn up, because this talk was prompted by a claim that he made in his book, The Trouble with Physics. Uh, multiple claims that he made in that book. <laughs> uh, the main one is, is this. Okay, so he says, despite the absence of experimental support and a precise formulation, a theory is believed by some of its adherents with a certainty that seems emotional rather than rational. Okay, so by rational, the, he has in mind the kind of philosophy of science notion of rational, which is that you don't believe a claim unless it's supported by firm empirical evidence. Um, which theory? Pardon? Which theory? String theory. string theory, hence methodology of string theory. Um, uh, so this is the claim I, uh, I want to um, argue against. Okay, I think we there are good rational reasons. I'm going to try and argue that there are good rational reasons for string theorists' belief in their theory that aren't shared so far or as strongly as the other approaches to quantum gravity. Um, Okay, so Roger Penrose in his book, The Road to Reality, put the question that I'm going to try and answer in this talk very well. So he, say, he says, are we entitled to infer from the undoubted insights into mathematics in string theory that it must also have a deep physical correctness? Okay, so do mathematical results and mathematical predictions and all these amazing mathematical miracles that they go on about give us reason to think that it also is a good physical theory? I'm going to try and show that uh, although it doesn't prove that it's a good physical theory, it gives us, it ups, it should up our credence in the theory a tiny bit, not as much as an experiment, but nevertheless it's rational. Okay, so, so I think um, that what quantum gravity research shows, especially string theory, is that there's a kind of change in the methodology of how physics is done, of how science is done. Okay, so this was well, put by um, Jaffe and Quinn in their famous, infamous article on theoretical mathematics. Okay, so they put, physicists uh, are not isolated, like string theorists, they found a new experimental community, in scare quotes, namely mathematicians. And it's now math math mathematicians who provide them with reliable new information about the structures they study. Often it's to mathematicians that they address those speculations to stimulate new experimental work, in scare quotes again. Um, and the great successes are now insights into mathematics, not into physics. Okay. And the, the case they have in mind here is um, the case of mirror symmetry in string theory, which I'm going to talk about in a moment. Okay, so, it, so the idea is that physical ideas, namely string theory, theory about what's supposed to be about our world, gain evidential support from these surprising, accurate, successful implications that come out of pure mathematics. Okay, so here's a claim from um, the architects of mirror symmetry, Green, um, well, uh, <coughs> well, some of the architects of mirror symmetry, Green, Plesser, and Morrison. Okay, so they say that Calabi-Yau threefolds, which are the things that string theory, ten-dimensional string theory is compactified onto, were originally introduced into string theory to provide six compact spatial dimensions, which complement four Minkowski spacetime directions, to yield consistent ten-dimensional background for string propagation, and they've led to some striking predictions in mathematical physics. So, in the latter category, the recent conjectures, evidence from numerical studies, explicit construction, and applications of mirror symmetry are indications of a deep mathematical structure that at present is best understood from the physical viewpoint. Mm -hmm. 
Okay, so so the case I'm going to I could have discussed uh, going to discuss a different case, namely the use of string theory to prove um, this thing called the moonshine conjecture, which, which is the idea that the monster sporadic group has something to do with elliptic uh, modular functions and so on. But this uh, this seems like a a clearer case, I think. So the idea is that from the perspective of string of strings uh, at the four-dimensional level, there's no distinction to be made between what seem to be very, very different objects, okay? often topologically different um, objects. So, so these are Calabi-Yau uh, threefolds in this case. They're different Riemannian manifolds. Uh, they can have different topological structures, and yet from the point of view of the strings, the strings are insensitive to, to these kinds of differences, differences between what look like different objects. Okay, so a quick guide to compactification and how it's supposed to work. So as we know, as you all know, there are five consistent uh, ten-dimensional superstring theories, and obviously we don't have ten dimensions, so we need to get rid of six of those dimensions. So we compactify, but when we do that, we get very many more. Uh, these compact dimensions get parametrized by these things called moduli, which are just parameters that tell you about the, the properties of, of these spaces. So we start with a 10-dimensional string theory and we compactify, which means that we have uh, a non-compact um, space representing you know, our ordinary real world that we see around us, and we have a compact six-dimensional space. Uh, complex uh, three-dimensional space. So the, so the idea is that the geometry of this compact manifold is what determines what goes on at the four-dimensional level in, in our world. Okay, so, so the, the structure, so the point here is the structure of this compact um, space is determined by what we want this, or how we see this particular space to be. Okay, so this physics, the broad qualitative physics, going into the construction of this compact uh, space here. Okay, so you might think you need things like supersymmetry. If you need supersymmetry, you need something that can preserve that kind of symmetry. Uh, you might think you need um, a particular number of generations of particles. So you need a certain number, a certain Euler um, number on that space. And as you add all of these different conditions in, you get... Oh. <laughs> Wow, that really does go quickly. <laughs> um, okay, let me very quickly speed up. Uh, this, um, what string theory discovered was that when you do this compactification and you look at the physics of strings on the four-dimensional manifold, you find that you get the same physics uh, relative to what look like very different um, compact spaces. Okay, so these were the spaces I showed before. Um, using the, with this kind of duality between these two distinct kinds of spaces, um, you can <laughs> use it to calculate enumerative geometry problems. Okay? So you use one easier, more tractable manifold to talk about very intractable problems in enumerative geometry. Okay, so the point being that although this is a pure mathematics kind of result, it has its basis um, in, in physical principles, in empirical principles. So if you can then given that string theory has then proved all these features are in enumerative geometry, you can take these results as evidence in support of the physical theory. The end. Thank you. Thank you.